As always, a big warm welcome back for more of my sea kayaking adventures. Our five days take us around the Slate Isles, Garvelix and Scarba, through Corryvreckan, down the remote west coast of Jura, and escaping this wild west side in Force Seven's gusting Force Eight and fully loaded kayak speeds of 10 mile an hour with wind and tide. Day one takes us on a promised trip for Andy to the Garvelix from Easdale via Belnahua. Day two, Belnahua via Flada to Cullypool before returning to Easdale. Then Ian and I would head south to Scarba Bothy for the night. Driving the shores of Loch Lomond on my six hour drive northwest to our launch point at Easdale. Helena Back, Easdale Island and the surrounding Slate Isles were once a major producer of slate, exporting roofing slate to countries all over the world. I hope you enjoy this video. If so, please like, share with friends and consider subscribing. Thanks. Some of the quarry pits were as deep as 90 metres, around 300 foot below sea level. And in 1881, a ferocious storm devastated the industry flooding most of the quarry pits in the area from which it never recovered. Our launch point at Elena Back Ferry, for me, is always the start of great kayaking adventures. To our surprise, a good number of our kayaking friends were in the area doing an incident management course with the renowned Jeff Allen. Calm but heavily overcast, we set off south of Belnihua. Just lovely evening light as well though, wasn't it? Being just into the last hour of the flood cycle, there was very little tidal stream against us, but the whole area has very fast tidal flows mid-cycle, especially on springs with tidal races reaching in excess of seven to eight knots. <laughs> We just arrived at uh, the island of Belnahua. This is where we're planning to camp. And it's just the end of the uh, flood tide. The eerie shapes of the ruined quarrymen's cottages come into view. A sight that always provokes a weird, almost ghostly feeling in me each time I visit. Yep. Back into the swing of things with a loaded boat, lovely. Yeah, just slide your gear up. Our plan was to unload the kayaks, pitch the tents and have lunch prior to kayaking the Garvalax, returning to the tents later to camp the night. Water view. Camping on Belna Hewer always provides stunning 360 degree views, with Scarba to the south and to the west Mull's magnificent south facing cliffs and usually a cracking sunset. Drone footage from a previous trip showing Belna Hewer's flooded slate quarry pits and the sad ruins of bygone times that once was a thriving slate industry.
Off to the east is the tiny island of Flada, with its distinctive 13 metre tall lighthouse, built in 1860. The shallowing seabed in this northern part of the Sound of Ling is swept by strong tidal streams, with speeds in some spots in excess of 8 knots. With tents pitched and lunch consumed, it was back in the boats for Andy's trip around the stunning Garvelix, an iconic set of islands out to the west. Heavy storm clouds were building in the area, and signs of mare's tails hanging beneath meant we were in for some serious downpours, so a little wet weather gear was retrieved from the hatch. Yep, that's the one. Sheep pens on the rocks used by boats to ferry sheep out to the graze the islands during the summer months. Rounding the northern end of the group to start our journey south down the stunning cliffs of the western side. Here's a deer! Andy! Can you see the deer? Amazingly, deer swim between almost all of the islands off the west coast of Scotland. Here's a big one, Andy. Golden eagles have often nested on these western cliffs, where I was lucky enough to spot them for many years during my visits. Sadly, there's been no sign of them at all the last few times of visiting. I must take the opportunity to credit Andy for a select few of his excellent videos and still photos that are featured throughout this video. Normally I don't appear in any of my videos on the channel, so this was a real treat to include them here. Thanks so much Andy. The colour of rock from these cliffs takes on an unusual pink glow in late afternoon light in the hours before sunset. When kayaking the Garvelix, I use the unhindered swell height as a guide to determine conditions further south through the Gulf of Corryvreckan and the remote west coast of Jura. Here's a good one. It 
It's always great to get close to the energy of swell as it collides with the rocks and reefs. You can even smell the ozone being released from the seawater. Fantastic. The late afternoon sun and cloud produce some stunning atmospheric lighting conditions. Rounding the southern point of the group, we worked our way up through the reefs of the eastern side to land in the tiny inlet that leads to the site of St Brendan's Monastery and Beehive Cell. A late afternoon snack before pressing on to our camp spot on Belnihua in time to make our evening meal before dark. <laughs> Andy provided great fun and banter as he educated me in the finer points of being an ardent Celtic supporter. <laughs> the early evening light produced a lovely quiet paddling atmosphere after the previous heavy rain clouds had finally moved away. Cracking day. Come on, Duke. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, yeah, good one. Top. 10 to the maid for, is it? Yep. Hope the maid's there with the food on. Super day. Finally, back to Belnahua, and it proved a great move to unload and pitch the tent earlier. A fantastic leisurely day with only just under 16 miles covered but nevertheless great conditions with stunning views and wildlife. There's always something deeply satisfying after a day in the boat. Back at the tent, food enjoyed, it was time for whiskey. Or was it rum? We woke up to grey skies after a dry night, so no soggy tents to pack, which is always a bonus. With breakfast consumed and gear packed, there was still time for a final explore around the old ruins, but very saddening to see the noticeable decay from subsequent visits over the years. Once noisy steam-driven machinery would have rattled away in an endless din, now lies silent, rusting away in the still salt air. An old rusting steam pump, once used to clear water from the bottom of the slate pits, deep below sea level.
With Ian and Andy packed, ready and waiting, it was time to launch, then paddle across the sound to Fladder and Cully Pool. I think there. Be fish farm, will it? We stopped and spoke to boat. This boat would be a big blue one. That could be a nice relocation if it was, you know, you were out in the rain or yep. out in the wind. With little tidal flow, we crossed to Fladder for a quick look at the lighthouse and cottages from the boats before crossing to Cullypool on the island of Ling. Cullypool had a thriving slate quarrying community which once employed 170 men. Sadly hit by the rapid decline in demand for slate materials, the population quickly dwindled. Thankfully it now has a healthy population employed in tourism, lobster fishing and farming. Are you still there? No idea. Don't think it's a sea eagle, Ian. A fantastic sight to see. We later confirmed the birds were actually a pair of golden eagles soaring around on the thermals. And surprise as we met our friends still busy with incident management from Jeff Allen. How did you meet you guys here? Oh. <laughs> I had a good one. Oh, yeah, good. Did you get out to the car black? With Easdale Island and Elinabak finish point close by, there was still enough time for Ian to try a little wake riding from a fishing farm vessel as it slowly passed us by. Although this was the end of Andy's long-awaited trip to the Garvelix and a cracking couple of days kayaking, this wasn't the end for Ian and I. Far from it, after having lunch with Andy, we replenished our water supply to head off south to the Bothion Scarba for the night and continue our five-day kayaking adventure. Thanks for the great company, Andy. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, share with friends, consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you want to see it now. <laughs> That's phenomenal.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.